So today we're at Willow Springs. We've got a C7 Corvette and six of its biggest competitors. The Viper, the Porsche 911 Carrera S, the Porsche Cayman S, the Shelby Mustang GT500, the Nissan GTR Track Edition, and the BMW M3 Lime Rock Edition. I've got the privilege of driving each car around the track for lap times, and we're just going to see how they stack up. But the, the idea is that we give, we give every car the same driver, right? Who's going to drive the cars in a similar way, uh, with a similar level of competence, and at the end of the day, we just see how it comes out. We started with the Viper. It's, it's the hardest car to drive. It requires the most of the driver. I know the track, so there's not a lot of learning curve to get used to the track. Um, so might as well put it first before there's any fatigue, right? It was the quickest car there, uh, unsurprisingly. You know, it's got the most power. It's uh, certainly got the best power to weight. It's got the most tire. Um, still the most demanding, though. Not an easy car to drive. It feels like it's going to bite, and uh, history has proven that they, that Vipers will bite. So then we tested the VET, and the VET's chassis is just easier for the driver. As the limits approach, you can sense them. The car is more tolerant, uh, slid around a little bit. And more enjoyable to slide around a little bit, and it was only six tenths of a second off the Viper's lap time, despite being down 180 horsepower, which tells you something about uh, the character of the two cars. In the VET, I feel like I can jump in and just drive right to those limits on a familiar track in the first couple of laps. So that speaks worlds for that car's capability. So the GTR is another six tenths back behind the VET, and to use a cliche, the GTR feels a little synthetic in this crowd. It's very, very fast and very capable, um, but it, it definitely, you get the sense that you're moving around a lot of weight with that car, that there's a lot going on behind the scenes when you shift, when you steer. Um, it's still a lot of fun, it's just a very, very different experience, and in this company, it doesn't feel quite as pure. Um, you know, that car is five years old now, and there's been progress in that time. It's turbocharged, and in the heat of, of the day that we were out there, that definitely cost it some power. The harder I drove it, the slower it got. So I think we would see a better lap time from the GTR if we'd had 20 degrees cooler. Um, it might have picked up a position. It probably would have been faster than the VET. Uh, still, wasn't that far off, really capable car, um, but you do get the sense that a lot's going on and it's probably pretty hard on itself. You're going to wear out tires, you're going to wear out brake pads faster in the GTR than you are in some of the lighter two-wheel drive cars out there. Another four tenths back is the 911. and. Um, that car is just magnificent on the racetrack. Uh, the days of the, of the 911 being a car that's going to bite you are really over. Certainly, when you approach the limits, physics are still at work. The engine's still hanging you know, behind the rear axle. And you can tell that that's the case when the car begins to slide. That car communicates so well, it gives you so much warning. There's so much notice that anybody who's not paying attention to that deserves to slide off the track. It's a really good driver's car and it's got a lot of power um, and it's got the best brakes in the group, hands down the best brakes in the group. You may pay $8,500 for Porsche's carbon ceramic brakes, at the end of the day they are that much better than all the cast iron brakes that were on the other cars. And another 1.4 seconds behind the 911 uh, is the Cayman S. That car dynamically is not too far off of, of what the 911 feels like. Obviously, they're both from the same company. There are similar tuning strategies at work between the two cars. One has the benefit of its engine being between the wheels, while the other one obviously is behind the rear axle. 
and that makes a difference. That Cayman has got a balance uh, unlike any other car in the group in terms of its combination of steering response and effort, power, brake metering. It just is so well balanced and uh, that, it sounds like a cliche to say that but that is the word to describe that car. Certainly it's way down on power relative to some of the other cars in the group but honestly if I were going to go to a track day with any of these cars and be out there with you know cars this powerful I think I'd be fine in that car. It's that capable, that much more rewarding. As you come up to and, and surpass its limits, there's a ton of comfort there. Um, it's not like the 911 when it gets sideways. It doesn't want to stay sideways for a really long time. And it's just, it's a, it's a remarkable automobile. The Shelby. What do you say about the Shelby? It's uh, a little out of sorts in this company. It is not a dedicated driver's car in the sense that these others are. You know, it's a pony car. It's more of a muscle car. And it was 1.4 seconds slower than the Cayman, which has half as much power. Its history is more going straight than turning. Now, Ford has done a pretty remarkable job making that Mustang turn. And probably for my money is the most fun car in the group. All I want to do in that car is go out and drive it sideways at every corner. And certainly that's not the fast way, but if you're in this for fun, that's the car to have in my mind. If you like driving sideways and you've got a tire budget, that's your machine. It's awesome. Last but not least, uh, the M3 Lime Rock Edition. 1.7 seconds behind the GT500. Now I think what we're seeing here is really, really high heat getting to that M3. Uh, it had the uh, unfortunate position of being the last car we tested that day and we can't control the weather. Um, so it was 1.7 seconds behind the Shelby and that's quite a bit when you start looking at where it falls relative to the VET. But I don't think that's completely fair for this car. It is a great driver's car despite being at the end of its life cycle. It feels rewarding despite the fact that it's down on power. It might not be quite as composed in some of the transitions as the other cars. It doesn't change direction quite as well. Still, it's eminently easy to drive. Uh, it communicates its limits very well, so that's cool. Obviously, we're talking about the cars relative to one another, but at the end of the day, we're really comparing them individually to the C7 Corvette. And, you know, the result is that the C7 was the second fastest car in the group. It was only six tenths of a second slower than the Viper around the track, a car which has 180 more horsepower. So bottom line, uh, the Corvette comes out second, and it is as capable as we thought it was going to be.